So if you guys want to learn how to do the logic I use for my export tab, as you can see, it's pretty comfortable. They turn on. Make sure to stick around, perhaps leave a like and subscribe because I might be doing schematics so that you can make this way easier. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just set up the items that you want to have them all just like I do. So this is going to be our, our launch pad. We need a logic processor, a microprocessor, memory cell, and a switch. The first thing you want to do, we're going to do the easy one first. We're going to select all of these switches. So we're going to add a simple jump. We're going to add a sensor. So we're going to set it here to enabled in switch 1. So to start off, we're going to have the simple. We want to know if the switch number 1 is enabled. And if it is, we're going to jump to a simple wait. Now these are going to be 20 seconds because that's the time a launch pad takes or needs. Next up, we're going to go here. And after that, we want to actually control these switches. So switch 2 is going to 0, switch 3 and so on, all the way to the amount of switches you have for your material. Once you put all your switches, we're going to add a simple weight. Now this is probably not necessary. I just add that just in case and now switch one switch one which is our main switch of course now we're gonna do probably the most tedious part of this which is actually the logic itself first off we're gonna connect these two and all the switches so we're gonna start this one pretty similar to the other ones we want to know if the switch is on the main switch is on and we have a jump here if the switch is equal to false or that is off we're gonna do the next step so we're gonna end here now you guys have to be careful with this one it's gonna be uh, a little time consuming but we need to know we're gonna name this one copper and again enabled now this one's gonna be the switch number two because that's the one we have for copper. Now we want to jump if copper is equal to false. So we have this set up right. Now we're going to write a 1 at 0. Okay. Next up, we're going to add a jump. So this is telling us if copper is not on, we're going to write a 0 at 0. So that one. So this is the simple logic. If copper is equal to false or is not on then we want to write a zero otherwise it's going to jump to this one and it will write a one and this one's going to be an always now goes your second thing which is switch number three then it's going to be lead and this jump is going to go to this one now you just kind of re repeat that thing so you can do this again. So if lead equals false, we, we copy this one, bring it down here. We copy the always, we copy this one as well. Now the side is going to stay the same, but this one we have to change where it's at. So we're going to change it to one as well as this one. So if lead equals false, we're gonna change, we're gonna jump to that one, and then we go to the next one, which will be this one. So I think it's meta glass. Switch number four. I'm just gonna check if it is yes, it is meta glass. And it's the same thing, you can just bring these ones down here to save you a little bit of time. And just remove these. So if meta glass equals to false, we're gonna jump to this one. 
this one's going to go at 2. Because it's going to be the second line, right? The same memory cell, 1 or a 0, depending what case it is, but at the same line. So it's going to overwrite each other. So we're either going to have a 0 or a 1, you know what I mean? So you just repeat this all the way until you finish. So this should be the end product, as you can see here. If you want, you can check. So if copper is false or off, we write a 0. And if this jump doesn't work, we write a 1 and then jump to the next one. So now you have basically binary in this memory cell. So the way I send my data through my map is just hyperprocessors because they have a bigger range. So what we're going to do with this one is just simply link it up. So you might have another memory cell like right here. You have to link that one as well. This is really simple. We're just going to add a bunch of read so read copper because it's a zero lead at zero at one I mean metaglass at number two just do this for all your materials so at the end you should have something like this next up a simple write now here check out we're gonna write again copper at zero but this time cell number two because we're transferring the data essentially right to another uh, different one so here goes lead at one so on and so forth number two right just do this for your materials so once you have it all done as you can see here, simple, cell number one, cell number two. I have these type of modules, so I'm just going to copy these ones. As you can see it's working. These are off because of these processors. All right, now for the actual decoding of the data. Again, you could use any processor you want. I'm using hyper ones because they have a big range, so they can cover a lot of your storage silos or whatever you have going on. So first off, we're going to link this one to this one. Now here it kind of depends. It depends how many materials you have in this range. So if you just have, I don't know, five materials, you just put those five into here. If I only have copper inside of this range, I'm only going to read copper. So one at zero, you know, you link it up. That's done. Now you might have another five materials here. So you just put whatever lead. Maybe you have metal glass in here too. I can't spell. So of course these are going to go 1, 2 and so on. We're going to do the logic behind it. So we want to jump if copper is equal to 1. So that means it is on. We're going to do a control switch number 1. Got to link just one switch because these ones are modular. So you can see this is the simple thing. Now these are going to be pads not domes. These are just like a simple chain reaction. So you can stack a couple of these together back onto the hyperprocessor. We're going to need a, another jump and another enabled. So if copper is equal to one, we want to jump here, which will turn this on. If it determines it is not on, so it's not equal to one, it's going to turn it off. And then there's going to be a always jump. To the next one so this is just a repeat so lead in this case when you finish you just can hook up an end oh i did this wrong these are different switches but as you can see here copper turn it on these are on they're gonna be on for 20 minutes i mean 20 seconds and after that they should turn off there we go if i turn on just lead these are on and honestly, that's really there, all there is to my system. Maybe in the future I could do some upgrades. If you guys run into any issues, tell me in the comments and maybe I can help you solve them. I might try to make some other designs for export hubs in the future. Tell me if you would like to see, I don't know, like a different system. Maybe one that doesn't look use logic. Because I do have an idea for some. But I think that's actually going to be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed, have learned something. This just gives you a bit of idea of for some logic applications. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.